It's time for the King Louie OG and Slimeboat Jones Slimecast. <laughs> 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 All right, fine, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. All righty. Here at episode four of the Slime Cast, myself, King Louie OG, joined as always by the Slime himself. Slime, how you doing? How you doing, guys? Today, uh, I think what we're going to be doing is covering one of my favorite franchises, um, King Louie. Definitely hit the the heavy hitters in the franchise, but didn't play every single one. So we're in for a good discussion uh, today, um, Louis. So we are going to be going into the Zelda franchise, and as Slime has mentioned, I have much more limited experience with titles than he does, as I have only completed one hundred. Well, not even one hundred percent, but I've only completed two games and played four or five. Both Ocarina and Time and Breath of the Wild. And I've played, but not completed, A Link to the Past and Majora's Mask, which strangely enough rhymes. Uh, Slime, you've played almost every single one of them? I've definitely played every single one with the exception of Skyward Sword. I somehow missed that. Um, I didn't have a Wii at the time. The motion controls kind of were... Uh, turn off for me. I didn't even give it a chance though, so there is that. I know it is getting remade coming up, uh, so there's a possibility that I'll jump in and experience that because they're going to have controller support. But I've definitely played every single one, um, and I've beaten most of them. I know there's a there's definitely a few in there, and I guess we'll cover it um, that I haven't beaten. Um, anyway, so Louie, why don't you tell us what your first experience with the Zelda franchise was? Well. In a previous slime cast, uh, we talked about the early games that we played as youngsters, mm -hmm. and my brother had the Super Nintendo, and I played and mostly watched him play Link to the Past. Um, so I've I've had that game in its original form. I think it's still in the closet, unless my brother took it. So that was my first Zelda experience. That, like I said, never finished that game. Played it, you know, sparingly over the years. I think the farthest I ever got was like to Dark World. Maybe played a little bit into the Dark World, but. Uh, never finished it. And then I, as a kid, I had, I forget if I had it, if I borrowed it or if I rented it, I had Majora's Mask for a while, for a period. I don't still have it, but, um, I never was able to get far in that. I was never, uh, I never could figure out a bunch of the timeline stuff. And, um, I had played Ocarina a time at friends' houses, multiple friends' houses, but I obviously never owned it, so I never finished it until I later got it on the 3DS remake that I beat 100%, which, um, you know, everyone says is, is better in some ways because things like the Water Temple are less annoying. Uh, but then I obviously I got the Switch as soon as it came out and got Zelda as soon as it came out. Uh, Breath of the Wild, that is, and really, really, really enjoyed that game. That's one of the best games I've ever played. I know because I think I've had less Zelda experience than you because it was so radically different that I like it more than you do. But I just really like everything about that game just worked other than the horses. The horses really were low. What, there was no point in using the horses. Ever. Yeah, there was no point. Um, but that's that's pretty much like I also rented one time Wind Waker and I couldn't get past the like tutorial sneak with the barrel part. So I was just like, yeah, this game's not fun. And uh there's that. So that's pretty much it for my Zelda palette. That's interesting because um, for me, um, I started with Awkward Enough Time. It was one of those things, and I think we might have talked about it in the first Slime Cast episode one, but uh, that I used to rent Awkward Enough Time over and over and over again. And I think my brother or my older sister must have rented it the first time to introduce me to it, but I kept renting it. And I was so young, maybe I was five, maybe six, that what I was doing was 
I was renting it and starting a new file every time. And like, I just never could leave the Kokiri woods. But I remember like liking finding the rupees and eventually I would get to the Deku tree or whatever. But for the longest time, I didn't know where to go, but I was really young. And later on, I ended up playing it, um, but not before I was introduced to other games in the series. Um, I don't think I built, I, I don't think I beat Ocarina of Time until I was maybe 10 or 11 years old, and I needed to use a strategy guide for it that I had to borrow from my friend down the road. So I remember I remember growing up and being able to get like pretty far, but never past the water temple or past the spirit temple. I remember like when I finally got past the water temple using the strategy guide, I was like in this like legendary part of the game that like I've been playing the same game for over and over, but never got to experience it. So it was really cool when I finally did that. As I got a little older, I got a collector's edition of it on the GameCube. And it had the Ocarina of Time, it had Majora's Mask, and it had the original two games, um, Zelda and then Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. So that was the first time that I played those two games. And really interesting, I had this GameCube that whenever the rumble feature was enabled, the game, like the console would freeze. So I'd have to go in and like really... um, like go into the settings and turn off all the rumble feature or the vibration feature um, in order to play my game, my game cube. But for some reason you can't do that in those two games. Cause it's just not a setting that they had. It was just like that was on the game cube platform. You know, it would, it would do that. So I, I could never really play them all the way through. Cause as soon as something happened where the game thought there should be a rumble or something, I think it was a coding mess up. It would freeze. So I played only the beginnings of both of those. Mm. And I don't think to this day, I ever went back and played Zelda 2 because it's infamously difficult and annoying. It's the only side scroller one. You've seen that one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the first one, obviously, is like classic, like top down, um, established a lot of like the tropes that are still in um, the newer games, with the exception of Breath of the Wild, I would say. Kind of bucked a lot of those trends. I'm interested to see what they're going to do in the next one, if they're going to keep those um, same like conventions or if they're going to reel it back to a more traditional Zelda experience. I'm hoping for the latter. And we'll get into that when we talk about Breath of the Wild specifically, yeah. I feel. And um, so, yeah. And then in that same demo or in that same collector's edition, there was a demo of Wind Waker. So that was the first time I ever played Wind Waker. And they had that sneak mission, that stupid sneak mission. Um, in there, and then they also had the f- Dragon Roost Temple as as one of them. It, I think it's the first dungeon. Um, Never got that far, and so I played both of those, and I really liked it. Later on, I ended up playing Wind Waker as it, when I got older. Maybe I was like twenty five or something like that. Like only a few years ago, I finally went back and played Wind Waker because I think I borrowed it from one of our friends, and I got pretty far. The game was really good. And then you get to that part where you have to find the the Triforce pieces. I know you, you never did this, but you have to like go now that you've unlocked the whole map. Now you got to go around to every corner of the map. Like it like slows down and ruins the total like the pacing of that game. So I never beat that one, but I've a hundred percented Ocarina of Time. I've hundred percented um, Majora's Mask, and then like you said, um, Link to the Past is, in my opinion the most quintessential Zelda game. Like that is like when you think of Zelda and all the tropes and all the themes, the one that did like every single one of them, you said you only got to the dark world. Like, what do you remember about that game? Link to the past. Uh, a link to the past. I remember several times starting it and like getting to the, where you use the key and you get the princess and then you got to like get out of there and like, I remember as a kid, like this is, you know, before you're 10, I must, uh, at at most I was like 11 the last time I tried, um, I would get to that part and then end up getting killed by one of the blue soldiers just because I like wasn't good. And then later, I think I must have been 16 or 17, I think I tried it on emulator again and got decently far, but I think like my whole emulator just like kept being weird and like it wasn't working right for me. I had a setting wrong or something like 
I tried to play that and uh, San Andreas on my emulator, like, and I could never get it to work right. Hmm. Um, some some games you just can't find a good ROM. Like, there's times where I'll play, like, I I played Ocarina of Time recently on emulator, and it was perfect the whole time through. Had no problems. There was one boss when I fought when I fought Bongo Bongo where it would freeze. It freeze down me twice when I beat him, but then eventually it let me through. That was the only spot I had trouble. But there's other games where you play the ROM and it's just like they have a bad rip of it and you just can't find a good rip of it anywhere. Um, you know, so there's games that are notoriously hard to emulate. Also, if they have certain like graphic features on the Super Nintendo, they had, I don't know, like a separate chip or something. I think it's like the FX chip, people call it. And that like helped them render. You know how in some parts it like looks 3D, like in the beginning of... Um, uh, link to the past they have the try the the tri yeah, yeah, triangles yeah. coming in like that uses a different like graphics like processing chip i'm pretty sure and that's hard to emulate too so uh it doesn't surprise me that that gave you problems yeah that's um they do a lot of proprietary stuff like that i think on purpose uh i know anti PS piracy ps3 yeah. is notoriously like so difficult to like do anything with like that's why they the developers didn't even want to make games for it yeah, so Link to the Past, it's one, like, I love it so much. It's got, like, the awesome map. It's just so memorable. And then they have the, the twist where it sends you into Dark World, which is very memorable, um, really cool. And you can, I like how you could switch back and forth to get around the map and to like, access, like, certain hidden things. I thought that was, like, really cool as well. Um, one thing that I don't like about that game is... The difficulty could be kicked up just a bit. Like, once you know how the enemies function, they're pretty easy. Like, there's a couple of times where you're going through the Hyrule Castle and you're kind of going through, like, rooms and rooms of enemies. And it's, like, a cool idea, but, like, they're all, like, pretty easy to, to face. Especially you get so powered up in that game. You, like, essentially get overpowered um, by the end of it with all the different items you have that you just rip through things. So I, it could be a little bit more difficult, but... At least it's not as difficult as uh, the first Zelda. I don't know if you've ever played that. I've only just, seen it played. Like, it's I've a little actually played it. That and the second one, especially the second one, are very unforgiving. I know. Is the sec? Is it the? You said the second one was the side scrolling. Yeah, it's the one where it's like you're in one thing, you just go to the next thing over, or you can go up and down. Or you am I thinking and, of no, the you first go, one? You can go up and down with elevators because it's side scrolling. It's like a Metroidvania game. Okay, so no, I'm thinking of the first one. I don't think I've seen the second one played then. The second one is very strange. It's very unorthodox. It's not like all the other Zelda games. Um, and I, it was such a big departure that I think that's why we, they went back to the original idea yeah. with uh, Link to the Past. Um, I think it's interesting because Breath of the Wild is all is also very different, but it's more similar to like the top-down Zeldas than like a two-dimensional Zelda. It's like very, very big. It's open. You're on a huge map. It's you're exploring. The combat is the same as like 2D Zelda though. Well, well or 3D Zelda. 3D I Zelda. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the combat is different, but one thing that they don't have in Breath of the Wild is they don't have. Well, no, I guess they do. Where you can come down. On enemies from above, it's harder to pull that? off because it's like only like, if like you're in Smash off. Bros. where you're coming down. No, yeah, you can do it. It's just it's harder to pull off because it's. Um, I know he takes fall damage, and also like you got to really be on top of a, a bow goblin like as you're paragliding, and like it just puts you at a disadvantage to go down right in the middle of all the guys anyway. So it's like you're better off coming in from the side and taking a few out before they even get to you. Before we get into Breath of the Wild, I want to just point out one thing that I, I love about Zelda 2. Um, the side-scroller? The side-scroller okay. one. The game is not good, but a lot of, like that, like I said, with the down attack in Super Smash Bros., like a lot of like stuff from that game is like is really represented in Smash Bros. Like the attack, all like the good music, like all the dungeon themes are in Smash, and they're really, really good. But, uh, this is from 2 now. This is from two. Okay. Otherwise, other than that, the game play isn't as good. Unlike Breath of the Wild, which I think is the the game that me and you both played about equal. I played it more than you. I think you played it twice through, or only I played twice? it twice through. Oh, okay. I played it once through, and I got like ninety nine percent done. I was going for all the 
these shrines and I got to uh, like 119 out of 120 or 118 out of 120 and I just like collapsed at the end. The second the second time I played, I didn't I specifically didn't do all the uh, the um shrines so that I didn't and I didn't do one or two of the um what are the divine beasts? Cause I wanted to actually like kind of struggle against Ganon. That was a problem with that game. I, I, I think I played it wrong where I did all the shrines. I got fully maxed up. No, I was like really it, bad. It. It's and there's then no I right or wrong. wrong. And then I went, game. Yeah. And then I went and I fought Ganon and it was just like scraping gum off the bottom of my shoe. Like, yeah, totally kicked his butt. That game needs to be more, made more difficult. I think at least in the later game, like the late game, the early game, it's actually pretty tough. Yeah. But it's um it's really once you start getting a couple of shrines in a row where you find a chest that has like a new weapon that's like better than all your other weapons, and then you go to the next shrine and you find another one like that, and then you find like four out of the next seven shrines you do. Now you have like four really cool weapons that are at like max health because you're wasting all of your poop weapons. And then like now you got these four weapons that like you just choose one to start and then you end up getting more weapons and then you go and bring the Kakari seeds to the guy and you get more weapon slots. And then you just have like 10 or 12 awesome weapons at all times. And that's when the game gets too easy. And something, you get a bunch of hearts too from doing all the shrines. Something that I did specifically is I always used the weakest weapon that I had. Well, that's yeah, that's what I did too. Yeah, always use the weakest weapon that I had. That way, if I got something new... I was constantly breaking stuff and I didn't care about it because I was usually keeping the things that were better. And by the end of it, if you do that, you end up with all like a f full arsenal of the best stuff. Yeah. The bows that shoot five arrows, you put five bomb I arrows on. I think it's three. It? Three, yeah. yeah. Golden Lionel bow. The Lionels were more difficult than anything else in that game. I think the, 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 yeah, the high the, level Lionels are harder than Ganon. Yeah. I would say so. Yeah. And early on, like when you're first, like you're just able to like fight the orange bow goblins and then you start seeing regular like blue and then the white and green guys. It's like, oh, those guys get really hard. And then you, you start getting those weapons and you just scrape them anyway. The Henox is cool too. Yeah, but he's got a, he, he's so easy to beat if you have the equipment. You're just yeah. like, okay, I'm going to backpedal, shoot you in the eye, backpedal, shoot you in the eye. Or you could like sneak up and steal the weapons off of his face, off of him, or you know, set up bombs. He's, he's easier to deal with. The Lionel is always coming at you, always doing something. The Lionels, they're tough. I know if you know how to dodge, like to do like the, yeah, the yeah, slow motion, the good timing, the good uh, flurry like, rush, the flurry rush, they can become pretty easy. Yeah, um, but they just have so much HP though. You have to do it like sixteen times. You know, the thing about the game is, though, and this is kind of, it's a good and it's a bad. And, you know, full disclosure, Breath of the Wild, I give like a seven and a half out of ten. Like, I don't think it's super stellar. And this yeah. is one of the reasons why. If you see a Lionel out there, there's really no reason to fight it. You don't get experience from it. You can get equipment. Like, if you don't have good equipment, you see a Lionel out there. Like, Sure, you can get a bow that shoots three or whatever. Um, you can get that or a nice shield. But other than that, like you could just walk around them. Yeah, but that's the thing. That's like why it's, I think, so good is because it gives you so many options. Like there are so many YouTube videos out there of like, oh, like my girlfriend who doesn't play video games plays Breath of the Wild for the first time. And like, oh, like my mom plays Breath or like my wife or like all of these different videos because – like, it's a game that anyone could pick up and play. As, as unforgiving as it can be, you can learn it. You can pick it up and you can decide, okay, there's a hundred Bokoblins this way, or I could chop this tree down, make a bridge and go across and over them and not deal with them. Uh, I could make a potion or I could eat a meal to make me like more, more stacked, or I could choose not to do that and put a challenge on myself. Or I could say... I'm so good at this game, I'm going to go and take down every Lionel I see because that's my prerogative. So that's why, you know, I, I like the game a lot more than you for those reasons. Like, I, you, I know you also have a thing against the shrines where you prefer the more classic temples that are long and that lock you in. Where I honestly hate that kind of thing where it's like, okay, 
I'm stuck in this and it's like a slog to get through it. And it's like every, and like every turn has four turns that you can get a chest this way or you fight a room of enemies this way. Or like, I, I'd rather get through to the next one and feel a comp more accomplishment and more small bursts. than here's four big dungeons and that's the game. And then the end. Well, I mean, usually there's never four dungeons. Like, if you look at Ocarina of Time, they have the three child dungeons. Then, as a child, also you have the bottom of the well and the half of the spirit temple. So you have six, five shrines just as a kid. And then as an adult, you have forest temple, fire temple, water temple, spirit, and the shadow temple. And then you have the final coup de gras at the end that's 11 actual and then there's the ice cavern and the grudu training ground so it's like there's 12 yeah. good dungeons and so it's like you know each get that's a 12th of the game each one for the most part and then there's some stuff in between so it's not like there's four big dungeons and nothing else um but for me like the shrines some of them are repetitive some of them you were just fighting one enemy which is, and is a, I thought it was a breath of fresh air compared to the constant puzzles. They needed something in there, though. Like, I, I, like I felt like I was just, there. like, the feedback loop wasn't there. It's like, okay, yeah, you get, like, you never get to, like, there's no, like, milestones. Like, you're just constantly getting stronger, constantly getting better equipment. But I guess the milestones would be fighting the four divine beasts. So, like, there's four main milestones in the game. And it's mostly exploration, which is great. I loved it. I had to blast first time through. But there's no like, okay, now I'm going to tackle this challenge. At the very end, they have Hyrule Castle. And when I finally got there and played Hyrule Castle, I was like, man, where was this gameplay the whole freaking time? Like, uh, man, they could have had three or four, so like, you know, or five or six, like at least six good dungeons like that. I think you're, um, the Yiga clan thing was cool. I liked the Yiga clan. And that was like a little mini dungeon. You go through there were some sneaking parts. The but see now the Yiga clan up, is a lot of is a lot of people's this uh, least favorite because of like, oh, the instant death aspect. That wasn't cool. It would that's be better not, just to go in there and fight. That's what I, I agree. What you're also leaving out is like the all the cast quests and all the little tiny side quests that you don't ever have to see that if you just end up talking to NPCs that are out there. And like, there's just they like parts of the map that, too. They, the, there's parts of the map that like you don't even have to explore that that have little hidden things that. that is I just thought so the game much was. To I it. thought the game was barren. Like I felt like I was going out looking around. You would think there'd be like a chest or a hidden like an alcove or a cave or a block or a switch but there's just not a lot of that a lot of it was just nat natural beauty which was good and at least the environments were varied like that's something that i will say in breath of the wild at least the environments are the environments are varied um but yeah like i said i feel like without the dungeons it takes away this sense of like mystery about like who built them and what, you know, it's just, okay, we know the shrines, it's the Sheikah. They're all the same as in comparison to like a Ocarina of Time where each one, each dungeon has its own like history. It has its own lore, has its own thing, you know, adds to some of the storytelling. Like even if it's not explicit, but even if it's like the shadow temple, well, the shadow temple is pretty explicit, but even if it's like the water temple where it doesn't really say what it's for, but you can kind of get, okay, it's spiritual or something about it. Something built, somebody built it forest temple to mansion hidden in the woods. Why is it there with breath of the wild? They don't really have that. The zone I ruins. It's like, okay, all right. Zone I ruins. There's so many little things that it's like, why are, why are they there? Like, the, the ruins there's the the labyrinths on all the corners there's why is it always lightning in that one spot of the map why mm -hmm. you know why are there's those, those like mushroom rock formations in the other spot of the map why is like um who, what are like why is the um yeah, the, the Korok, mazes are weird. <laughs> why is the Korok forests like completely like you know separate and covered in mist now like there's a lot of things that you're you're neglecting. I feel. 
I don't like I said, it's not a terrible game. The environments were good, but they just didn't have that. It had a strange piece pacing for me. Like I said, I got to like 118 shrines and I like nearly collapsed of exhaustion. Like it was like just a little bit too much. Just a little bit all the same. Just a little bit too many repeats. Got to the point where I was like, ah, oh, go into the next one. All right. Yeah, do it. but go to the next one. Ah, oh, there you go. Doing it. Go into the next one. Ah, oh, all right. Do it. Go to the next one. And you just like, yeah, it was, it didn't give see, like good story beats. I see now I can't support like, like normally, like you say, people have their opinions, but if you go back and you play Ocarina of Time, you're literally like, it's just changing scenery. You're literally doing the same thing every time using the grappling hook to get across. You're like shooting the arrows here to like open the gate there. And it's just like literally the same mechanics in every, in the same, in the same way in each part of the game, just with new aesthetic around it. No, you get a different dungeon item every time. Yeah, but you're so you're just adding to the list, but you're still doing primarily the same thing every time. So it's like, well, I mean, that's what Breath of the Wild is. That's what every game is. But yeah. the fact that you're saying that it's too, I don't know, I can't because it's like just because it's divided into 120 as opposed to four long ones, it's the same thing. Except no change in aesthetic. But that's the point: is that it's there were shrines built to test Link. Mm. So they would all use the same material. Mm -hmm. So that just makes sense. Yeah, I mean, to each his own. I know yeah. when I got to the end of it, I was so freaking done. I wanted to complete the game, like 100% the game. And I was like, oh, I just have to beat it, man. I can't, I can't play it anymore. You know, but I had a like, I had an awesome time up until that moment. Like it was like the, that shrine. I was like, yep, yeah, that's the one that broke me. I can't do it anymore. I'm freaking done. You know, but before were that, I was having a blast. You know what also was good? A lot of the um, getting up to the towers where they made it like difficult, because uh, you know obviously you. Unlock. I like the climbing. The um, yeah, the climbing. Uh, I thought that was a general. great addition for his altogether. Um, the rain got tedious, but you could deal with it. Uh, but I they think they had to do that. Yeah, the um, for gameplay. I forget if it was just because I know there was a few of the towers where there was like. You had to really get up there. Like you either had to uh, go through a bunch of guardians, or you had to go through a bunch of bokoblins and moblins. Uh, like there was that one that's like all surrounded by like toxic sludge, and you have to like jump up and around and fight a bunch of bokoblins and moblins. And then, mm -hmm. uh, the one that's like all the way up, you got to keep climbing up and up and up. And there's a bunch of guardians everywhere. And then just the one in Hyrule Field, like right in the center, there's just guardians on like four of the si all four sides. So you have to like. Sneak, run by the first guy, get up, switch sides so that the first guy who tracked you couldn't see you, then, like, climb up so far so that the, the second one sees you, but then you, like, switch back to the other side and you're high up enough where the first guy doesn't see you anymore. So it's just, I, like... Or you could just go, wait for them to see you, reflect, kill it in one hit. Yeah, but that's before, that's before that's before you're good at, before you're good at doing hit. that. I feel like Hyrule Fields is, like, an area that uh, you're meant to avoid in the beginning. Yeah, that's... That's, but I specifically wanted to unlock that tower early on because it's right in the middle. Yeah. So I like got it down to a science, like how to get past him. Uh, my nephew wanted to play that game one time. And so I gave him the switch. I put it on handheld mode and I let him play it. And he just wanted to like, he's, he was young at the time. So all he did was just run forward and jump. Mm -hmm. So like, he's just running forward and jumping. I gave it to him and he just is going into Hyrule Fields. And I'm sitting there watching over his shoulder, like laughing as like all these guardians start coming out and like trying to get him and shoot at him. And he's running. He's like, Oh my God, what's going on? Oh, I remember that. That was funny. That's, um, <laughs> and then he eventually got caught by something. Obviously. Uh, so yeah, like when I was a kid, I, like I said, I sucked at Zelda, so it's definitely, uh, something I played later on. I don't know, like I, and you said you didn't beat Ocarina for a long time until you got the guidebooks. So it's, it's not really a, like as, as Nintendo kid friendly, um, typically is, it's not easy to pick up a Zelda game and really be good at it early on. Well, I'd I mean, say. I would say that the Nintendo being easy thing is new because, like, all the old Nintendo games were hard. That's true. Like, it wasn't until... I mean, the games didn't start getting, like, easy, easy until... Wait. GameCube, I, maybe? No. I, none of the Zelda games are easy. All the Zelda games are pretty hard. Ocarina of Time is a little easy, and 
Link to the Past is a little easy for me because I've played them a hundred times now because they're my favorite games and I've beat them 20 times each. So I wish there was like a hard mode. I know there's a master quest to knock great enough time, but it's just like moves stuff around. It really doesn't make it too much harder. So I wouldn't say any of them are easy, especially Breath of the Wild in the beginning is pretty tough. Yeah. Uh, when you're first and you have like no equipment, you hitting people with the skeleton arm because that's all you have <laughs> or the stick. The uh, the stick is typically the first, but the skeleton arm is funny. Um, I know there's a few other funny ones. that's like ridiculous. But and then you also have to learn that like I didn't realize at first like you get the sledgehammer and like you think video game sledgehammer awesome I'm gonna like beat someone up and then it's like oh no it's really only good for like breaking the rocks, the rocks and fighting yeah. the rock enemies uh, so it's like oh every each weapon has a unique purpose like more than typical of a game because like you know most games you have a like. Bethesda game, for example, Oblivion, you have, you know, blade and blunt. So it's like you would think, okay, it's just a blunt weapon. But no, it actually has its own little unique thing about it. And it's not great in actual combat. And then just, you know, obviously like classic stuff like the spear, you have more range and you got your swords that are either quicker or bigger and slower. So I, I just think the combat is because, you know, if you go back to Ocarina or any of the other games, you only have like three or four choices for weapons. Not really. And in older 2D games, you like only have a sword and it just changes kind of. I would say for Ocarina of Time, for most casual players, especially the first time you play it, like you're pretty much just going to be using the Master Sword yeah. most of the time. You can get the big Goron sword and a few other yeah. things, though. But so that's... The hammer is cool. I like the hammer. Yeah. So that's like that's, that was like a radically different thing that I wasn't expecting early on. I think that works. I like the weapons being changed out, but I feel like there was a lack of like key items. Like one of the things with the, the Legend of Zelda series is that like you go and you get a key item, you get the raft, you get the hook shot, you get the hammer, you get the mirror, stuff that like, okay, unlocks a whole portion of the game. And in Breath of the Wild, they didn't do that because like, okay, you can glide around, so you don't need the hook shot. Um, or else it's going to be, uh, like that just cause game where you're like, you're grapple hooking and with the, but that, that was so be, much that fun. Would be fun. That, that would be so fun. Much, I love that game for that, that reason. That would be fun. Uh, but like, there wasn't any of those like key items that said like, okay, now I can do something I couldn't do before, you know, and actually yeah. unlock a part of the map. Like with the breath of the wild, you are just unlocking the map by arduously literally getting there. Right. And that's why like, it's more... I th I prefer that. I hate, like, in Pokemon has the same issue. It's like, oh, I can't get here because I don't have cut. It's like, don't barricade me. If I want to go somewhere and get killed by strong enemies, let it happen. Like, let me learn from my mistakes. Or let, Like, I don't like barriers in games like that. Unless it's, like, story barriers where it's like, oh, you can't get here because, like, this is part of the game where like it's you know supposed to be during like a climactic war scene or something like that makes sense i'll accept that but just like oh yeah it's just another path you could take with like stronger enemies but nah can't go i don't like that hmm. so i honestly really like that about breath of the wild that it's like oh okay i can just run through hyrule field and get this tower real quick I can do that if I wanted to, if I, and if, or if I wanted to actually try to get better at fighting guardians, I could stand there and fight them and die over and over. Cause it is really, that's something I could see being a negative is people, you know, there's really no uh, negative to dying in the game. And as far as I remember, well, one of the things that I think is off is like the, the feedback loop, like the gameplay loop where it's like, okay, well, if there's never, like you can go and fight Ganon at any time. And there's no big ch story checkpoints other than the four guardians. The rest are like just shrines just to level up. I know you need to get the master sword. You need to have a certain amount of hearts. Or whatever. 13 hearts. Um, so like there is a minimum barrier to get the master sword. But other than that, there's no like, like looking back at it and saying like, do I want to replay the game again? It's hard for me to get back into it because it's like, hmm, like there's no like checklist of what to do and what to go down, you know, in your second playthrough. It's just like, okay, well, I'm going to do is I'm just going to like explore the same areas. I just explored it. You know, I just I already found everything. Or you could say, I'm not going to do any shrines I'm, or I'm going to do, you know, only so many shrines to get the master sword or. And then go right to fight Ganon. And go right to fight Ganon. Or, you know, there's, you know, you, there, that's why there's so many different speed runs out there. Because you don't even have to do anything. You just go right to Ganon. 
again with the options that's why i feel as the game is so good but I, you know the game is good i loved it it's just yeah I, like i'm hoping for breath of the wild 2 and i'm ho- like i'm hoping because they uh in the trailer it's like it shows it like a cave entrance like they're inside they're going around like i'm hoping that there's more like interiors see you know? I'm, I'm all for it if they want to add because obviously the divine beasts are already set in stone like those are over and done with mm-hmm. if they want to add like both maybe not 120 shrines but let's say if they wanted to do 60 shrines or 50 shrines whatever and then like eight mega dungeons yeah, I think a, that would be a good there's balance. A, there's that a healthy awesome. medium. When I say, oh, I want dungeons or whatever, or it was missing the dungeons, it's not because I'm mad that they had all those shrines. It's not because I'm mad that the gameplay is open. It's just in addition to it, they could have had some classic dungeons in there. It wouldn't, yeah. it wouldn't, it wouldn't go unnoticed, okay? I would appreciate it. <laughs> right. But So I'm hoping in this next one, um, it looks like they could be adding some dungeons because of like some of the, the themes that they had in the yeah. trailer. And uh, you see uh, in the one trailer we've gotten in what two years now, the uh, at the end of the trailer, Hyrule Castle starts like coming up. So it's like who knows if there's going to be like floating island dungeons that you know could be popping up, other places floating around. Yeah, I'm interested to see what they do because okay, it's a it's a it's a sequel to Breath of the Wild. I think a lot of people think that they're going to reuse the map because they spend so much time actually doing the map. Like it's it's clearly the – it's obviously called Breath of the Wild too, but it's clearly the same setting, the same map. Why wouldn't they use the map? Because one of the big things about Breath of the Wild is that you're exploring the map. So if they, they reuse the map, that's like – well, you can. It's going to be really strange. No, 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 no. You can, I'm, okay, not I'm saying, just going to go to the parks that have I, the new stuff. Uh, that type thing. No, no. Know? What I'm saying is they'll reuse the map, the topography. This is obvi- like Zelda was clearly had a different hairstyle and was in a different outfit. Like this is there's some time that's passed here, so there's could be much more civilization now that everyone's not in, in you know calamity mode because Ganon's you know been defeated quotation marks because obviously yeah. he's under the castle there. But so wait, there's so much towns, villages, you can get towns and villages. Like you could say, oh, like there was a landslide here. Now it's all like there's so many different things you could do. Just keep the topography because it's, it's essentially isn't Majora's Mask like kind of the same topography as no. Ocarina? No, no, it's a completely different map. You're in a completely different place. Oh, okay. nothing's the same at all. It's the same assets, meaning the NPCs look the same. Hmm. Like they have a counterpart. But they have a different name and a different thing. They just reuse the assets. They reuse the same assets for Link, for some of the em- enemies. Um, but then they added new stuff. It was almost like Majora's Mask was like essentially what a like a ROM hack would be nowadays. Okay. Like, you know, have you seen the Super yeah. Mario 64 ROM hacks where it's yeah. like, okay, it's all the same assets, but it's a new freaking game? That's essentially what more Majora's Mask is. Different, different And different mechanics, too. They had the whole where you can transform. And the masks. And with the masks and all that, so... Um, I don't know. I would rather them not reuse the map. If they're reusing the map and just added some new stuff here and there, I actually won't get the game. Eh, I, I, you're clearly uh, entitled to your own opinion, even when it's wrong. But um, yeah, they I, really I don't got to do like I, I think they should just do the same thing they did with Majora's, where they kind of either you're like north. Well, clearly more, there's or more there's to floating it. islands or huge, maybe just what a I'm giant saying. crater. Like it would have to like radically. That's change what I'm saying. There's like clearly in order the, to make it like worth it for the, me to go back and explore it again. The trailer clearly points out they're going to be underground in new areas. The Hyrule cl- castles rising out of the ground. That something's changing. Like uh, obviously they're not going to a a to b paint copy and paste the map, but like. The volcano is still going to be the same size. You know, the the Zora city is going to be in the same spot. Maybe it's bigger with more extravagance. Like, you know, the, the Rito village is, is more decked out. Like, there's the... Just because it's in the <laughs> same spot. I mean, I, 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 I there's plenty of games over the time that have done that. Where it's like, you go in the same areas. Like, Mass Effect. Like, you go... Well, you got all new planets, but you're on the Citadel, you know. You might see a new area of the Citadel, but it's still the Citadel. Yeah, but it has different 
you didn't have like the same cells though. Like it was a different map, just because you were in the same like yeah. The Citadel is huge as a city, so like what you're in a different part of the city. Yeah, but it's still like you're. But that's fine though. You're you were fine with that, so it's like what you're just like underground now. It's the same concept. I mean, if you're underground the whole time, and then it's a completely different map. I'm saying like if they literally have the map. That you can explore all the same areas as the first Breath of the Wild. But they just have, I don't know, like a dungeon here and there that they added. Like, like some people are saying that online. I, like, I would be really disappointed. Oh, one, the area with Kyrule Castle is a little bit changed. For me, it would like have to be the whole map would have to be changed. Or just different for me to like really enjoy it. Because like the whole thing that I enjoyed about Breath of the Wild the first time through was exploring the map. Because the map is like its own thing. Like, just to explore it. It was, like, the purpose of the game is to explore the map. That's why the shrines are all around. And, like, well, of course you're doing the shrines, too, but it's about conquering the wild. It's about yeah. conquering nature. It's about conquering the map. Right. But at the same time, now this is in the future. All the shrines are, are up, and they're, they're turned off because they're not needed anymore. And, like, vegetation is probably growing on them, and it's all different now. And, like, people are, like, building cities, and it's not – it's, like – it's not going to be the same place, even though, like I said, it's just... What do you think they're going to do? I, that's exactly what I think they're going to do. It's going to be the same layout, but all new stuff. Yeah, I really hope they don't do that. I don't know. I, like, that's... <laughs> what else could they do? I don't understand, like... Different map. What do you together. think? Like, they're just going to... They're going to go to a new continent all of a sudden? Like They could. Hyrule Castle raises up and then floats over a neighboring kingdom, and they're over there, and there's crazy shit happening. Or... I guess. You know, they could do it, like, I'm, like, I hope that they really radically change it. I don't know what they could do. That's why I'm not a game designer. I really hope that they have something good planned. Because the, the mechanics are all good. I don't think they need to change the bones. You know, as far as, like, okay, like, the the combat and the glider and everything like that. And the mechanics I like. But please, God, not the same map. I think it's, uh, I think you're radically off base. <sighs> I think you're radically <laughs> off base. I think that in your expectations of a game called Breath of the Wild 2, where it takes so place... So what? Okay, so would you, like, in Halo 2, for them to put you on the assault on the control room level? That's But that's, just with, but that's just not within, the same. But that's just in, the same. in one area, there's different... There's not a tank, there's a... The that's not the same, because you're playing the same mission. It's mission-based. You can't compare the two. This is an open-world game. It's, it's, you can't, those, it's, it's, that's not fair, a comparison. So it's like saying, you know, would you watch, um, the, just cause it's, uh, directed by Steven Spielberg, like, uh, it's, you can't, you can't watch it cause he's using the same actors. Like, what if they came out with Skyrim 2 five years ago, you know, five years after Skyrim came out? Skyrim 2 and it was literally this or Elder Scrolls 6 but that's not that's Empire not, Fall but that's okay but what you go in there but, and it's the same literal map as but, Skyrim but just again the towns are a little bit bigger and there's you're, different you're, ma you're making quests. comparisons that aren't would you be accurate? happy if they no, did that you're making comparisons that aren't accurate because I'm telling you Elder that. Scrolls each individual one has a different area. That's specifically what it's designed to do. Whereas Zelda I has different that. timeline beats where as long as you're in the same timeline, you're in the same area. Where That's not true. Well, not necessarily. That's not true ever not, anywhere in the series. Not, that's not true. No, 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 no. Not that's, you know, that... But they're all the games are like hundreds or thousands of years apart most of not the time. Not Ocarina of Time. And Majora's Mask. Okay, you just said that that guy. was an asset flip, though. So that you can. It's an that's, asset that's flip, and that's what I'm expecting from this game. Right, is an asset flip. Right, but then, but you but can't. Hyrule is not Termina. But it's not an open world. It's so it's like one sixteenth. What they can't make a new open world. You know how that's why it would take four years to do that, and the game would never come out. It's been two, and they already had all the... And it's, uh, according the to all assets. the rumors, it's in uh, localization right now. So it's going to be coming out right when they said it would, right around holiday. Mm. Or early next year. Either quarter four of this year or quarter one of next year. So it's like that's lining up. So I, you're you're radically wild in your... Uh, oh, I'm not saying that that's what I... Th I think that they're going to do what you're saying. Right. Personally. And that's why I'm worried about it. Because I don't want that. I want them to make just... New dungeons, new places to be, new map. 
Hyrule Castle comes up, floats away, and it's in a different spot. Either that or they like mess up Hyrule so much it's like they make it into Swiss cheese and there's just caverns and just new mountains and just it's completely essentially it's different. Yeah, well that's what I think that's I think it's gonna be a bit of both where it's um, it's gonna be the same but different. The the like I said, everything's gonna be in the same spot, but it's getting there is gonna have because obviously now Ganon's power is diminished. There's not going to be as many monsters. Like maybe now there's going to be uh, more like pockets of areas where it's like only monsters, and then there's like pockets well, there's of not areas. Be guardians, right? Because the guardians. Well, no, I think they have control of the guardians now because Ganon's gone, and they have like the the divine beasts under control, so they could probably control the guardians at some. Or they could learn. They use the the Sheikat slate and whatnot. Mm. So that's a that's like you know maybe there'll be side missions where you're riding guardians, and doing fun stuff like that. That'd be cool. Like that's like there's a lot of possibilities. That'd be cool. Like just because the the map, see that's where I feel like you're you're too focused on the map. Like just because the map doesn't change doesn't mean the game's not going to change. Well, when the core mechanic is exploring the map. If they do that same thing again, I'd be worried. But it's but now you're talking about adding. Okay, yeah, it doesn't, they add, they add new you, ways to play. If they add new dungeons, then yes. If you just look, then it's not about the map. If anymore. you just look at the promotional material, you can tell that that's not the direction they're going. They're going for more story, more delving, more dark like Ganon stuff in the background. Fantastic. There, that's the, if you look at the trailers for Breath of the Wild One, it was like Link on the horse riding through the fields, like mm-hmm. exploration. Like it's clearly hinting that it's not going to be like. What that. if? What if they do this? What if you're just in the Hyrule fields or whatever? Game starts. You have a couple. You know, you're outside in the familiar area. You go to Hyrule Castle. The story thing happens. Raises up. And then the whole game takes place underground, like a hundred percent of the game. I, you know, that I can't. Different I'm caves, not going to say. I'm not going to admit a hundred percent on top of different civilizations, like really getting into some like you know Gobekli Tepe stuff. I, well, that's cool, but at the <laughs> ancient same, aliens of oh y'all, ancient aliens in Hyrule. At the same time, <laughs> the like again, the title's Breath of the Wild too. So there's going to be some elements that are the same. Like, you can't, like, Breath of the Wild 2, Majora's Mask, completely different title. Completely different title. That's true. Breath of the Wild 2, whereas the second edition of the first game. Well, it's not Breath of the Wild 2. It's, they said, the sequel to Breath of the Wild. That's true. That's true. It's not called Breath of the Wild 2. It could be Breath of Darkness. Or it could be anything. It could be Sickening Miasma. It could be, like, the deepest dungeon or something. It could Mm. be anything. Mm. Legend of Zelda, Ganon's hand. See now, that's you never know. That could be like, something completely different. I'm hoping for something. Completely see now, different. that's that's why it's hard because everyone just calls it Breath of the Wild too. So yeah, see, it's think, been messing with your brain. Yeah, it's been messing with your brain. I hope it doesn't even take place in in Hyrule. I hope it doesn't take place it, on the map. It obviously does because Hyrule Castle is in the trailer. True, but it's floated. Go anywhere. Right. Could gang? It could have. Could, yo, what if he was a giant guardian? It could pull a Wonka, a Wonka elevator, and just go into space. It's interesting because I'm pretty sure in the Breath of the Wild one, uh, like concepting, they were talking about having UFOs and aliens in it. That's why I said the ancient aliens thing. I wasn't kidding. Mm. Well, I they mean, said that they wanted a UFO and this and that. Yeah, they wanted the dirt bike way earlier than it got put in. Like I guess one developer was had to like convince the other developer to like let them do that, which. Honestly, the dirt bike, or the motorcycle, whatever you want to call it, is so, it makes the game so much, like, it's what the horse should have been. Because you could just you could snap it to yourself. Yeah. The horse, you gotta, like, go and find, or, like, you fast travel across the map, and it's like, oh, your whistle doesn't work, you're too far. Oh, so I have to, like, go all the way back to the snow uh, shrine that I just did, all the way in the corner of a map near no fast travel point. Actually, all the shrines become fast travel points, but it's like that defeats the purpose of fast travel if like you can't fast travel with the horse. So it's like the horse literally becomes useless after you find a few shrines in a few areas. But like the bike, you could just like, oh, okay, ride from here, put it away like it's a spell, ride from and, you know, do my thing, summon it again. That's how the horse should have been. That's how it is in like games like Ghost of Tsushima. It doesn't matter where you are. You whistle, the horse comes to you. You could be across the map. It's like it's a game. 
Let it be a game. Don't inconvenience yeah, the game. Yeah, they did that in Ocarina of Time, where you just you play the the song. And yeah, boom, it's like it could be it shows up right behind you. You know, it's like oh, okay, right. Cool. right That's right. how it should be. Um, I never used the horses. I got the one horse that was like the big black one with the gr- with the red hair. It's like it look kind of looks like a Ganondorf. Yeah, and there's um, I think the I used the amiibo to get Epona. So that's that was just like the one horse I had. I think you let me borrow the amiibo, so I could do that too. Yeah. But then I never used it. You never used it. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I'm really hoping just for like a really dark, gritty, dungeon-based slog, completely opposite of Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild too. That's what I want. It's I, 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 like I said, it's going to be different, but it's going to be the same. So. They wouldn't, even though it might not necessarily be called Breath of the Wild 2, they wouldn't call it the sequel to Breath of the Wild if there wasn't some elements that were similar. It could just be the sequel in story. You know, it could be, that could, could be really different. But again, that's... Just, mm-hmm. the, the, oh, they find Ganon's body after defeating Calamity Ganon. But it would have taken a lot longer if it was radically different. And they wouldn't call it a sequel if they took the full time to develop a new game. Yeah. Well, I know that they're using the same bones, which is good. Same combat, yeah. same item system, I'm pretty sure. I think that's all good. I don't think that needs to be reworked. I think there needs to be a little bit more goodies that you can find around the map. Yeah, that's that one thing I yeah, will that say. It's, is that it's barren of the goodies. There's not a lot of goodies, and like... There's not a lot you of can, loot just, you can just choose, around. You can just choose one or two armor sets to upgrade. And you're good. And you're good. Like And you, you get one of the best ones right in the beginning, the knight armor. That's what I used almost the whole way through. Oh, well, the best armors are, like, obviously, the when you get all, completing all the dungeons, like, the Link actual, like, green with the shorts, um, and you upgrade that all the way, that's, like, the best armor in the game. And then the... Yeah, but what's the point? The, if you the do, bone armor, armor or what, I forget what it's called, the warrior bone. Yeah, yeah. If you upgrade that too. all the way, it's amazing. But not for defense, but for attack. I think yeah, and then... The other one that's really is is harder to get because you have to get it from um, the monster parts the, guy. Yeah. I can't think of his name, but the Dark Link outfit where you run faster at night is like so cool. You know what's really funny about that guy? You told me about him. I played the whole game. I got hundred and whatever shrines out of one hundred twenty. I never came across him once. That's the thing is like there's a lot of things that you like missed out. I don't know. I feel like I played the whole. F- game i feel like you just had, didn't have your eyes open or something i don't know i just i think i came across him once and the first time you find him he's like tells you what he's all about and says that he, he can meet you around the map and then i just never came across him again you, the the most common place to come across him is in um hateno village no not hateno um where do the uh the the, the sheikah people live uh kokiri kokiri that's yeah, yeah. Uh, in Kokiri Village, above the waterfalls, his hot air balloon is usually up there at night. That's like the most common place I found him. Mm. It's like I Kakariko. It's, sorry, Kakariko. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, that's where I found him the most. And you can also see him in Hateno. But I would never go back to the towns for anything. I would just you know use them as fast travel points sometimes, or just you know to um, buy bomb arrows or something. Buy you buy, buy arrows and arrows water. or use the. Uh, the dive the the, the place, shrine to like get more hearts or more stamina that's right there. Mm. So that would be a lot the, of the time. The sneaky shrine? No, not the sneaky one. The just the in Co- oh, uh, okay. Kakariko. Is you just like you literally you go to the shrine above Kakariko and you glide right down, like directly where you're looking, and there's the thing right there where you can get your your heart upgrades and whatnot. Oh, I thought you were talking about the the well, sneaky one. The, the sneaky one, if you plan ahead, you don't ever need to use. It's true. So I only needed to use that on my first playthrough for like one heart. And then the second time I played, I never even needed it. I forget what I did. I think I leveled up my stamina and my hearts kind of equally together. You really only need, because you know how the stamina bar is like the circles. Mm-hmm. You, so you start with one circle. You only need two bars and like a, a half. To really do everything. Because once you get Rivali's Gale, nothing like... You can get up. You can get anywhere. Anything. That See, now Rivali's Gale is something that's definitely broken and definitely changes the pacing of the game. Because there's like places you can't get to because it's like, oh, my stamina is limiting me. I can't get here just yet. I have to either find another way or like come back later with more stamina. 
But Rivali's Gale, it's just like, oh yeah, you want to get up there, you're up there, and like maybe you don't get all the way to the top, but you're so close, you just climb up a little bit, bang, zoom, you're already at the top. I think he was the last Guardian section that I did. So I think what I did was I did the Zora, which I forget what the actual upgrade was, and then I did the Goron area. That's you. And I got Mipha's, the defense. Mipha's Grace is the... Is the one's that? The hearts? Gives the you full, health. like, full fairy health. Oh, okay, yeah. And then uh did Darunia. Or not Darunia. What's his name? Daruk? Daruk. Yeah, I did Daruk's uh, Guardian. I got, the like, the shield thing. Then I did the Gurudu area. And I got the lightning. That's cool. That's a yeah. good ability. Yeah. It reminds me of... um uh, Link to the Past, there's like a spell that you could do where you like swing around, I think it's called Ether, and does the lightnings around. And it's like pretty much pulled from that, which I love. And then uh, and then I got Rivali's Gale at the end. I think when I did the uh, retail I'm trying section. to think the first time I played, because I, now I'm confusing both times. Because I know, see, I remember specifically doing, uh, I think Rivali I did third, because I know I did the Gerudo one last. Um, I think I might have did Daruk first, then uh, Mifa, the Zora, and then Rivali, then the Gerudo, um, in that order the first time I played. Because I remember getting to the Rivali dungeon, and you're supposed to do that one first, no question, because the boss is so easy. And the... And the Rivali's area? Yeah, you do his, his, it's, it's totally supposed to be first, because it's the easiest boss... And it's the most simple of the divine beasts to, to like work around and get all, you know, you have to touch all the points on it to open up all the doors so that you can get to the main thing and, you know, cleanse it of the Ganonness. I always felt like the map kind of funneled you towards the Zora area because it's like downhill and easy to go. I, I see now I didn't funnel any which way. Like I saw, I remember this is a, mo a memory that like specifically you finish the part where you do the Twin Peaks, and then you go and you uh, talk in Kakariko to what's her face, uh, Impa, and then like from there you're supposed to go to Hateno to to see the two scientists. I can't think of their name right now, um, Robbie and uh, I can't remember the other one. Um, and then after that, it's like you kind of can go anywhere, and I just went right to Daruk because he was right there. Literally, like, Akala is where the scientists are, and if you just keep going, it's like the mountain's right there. What was your favorite Divine Beast? Um, I think probably... Yeah, no, I, the hardest one is to, to figure out is the camel. Yeah. That's the hardest one to figure out. I think the, the easiest one is the bird, and then the other two are kind of both in the middle. So it's like, I, you know, I'm not mad at... Uh, any of them, but I'm not, you know, I, I don't, I don't think I could pick a favorite. They're all, they're, they all are pretty good. Yeah. I'm not sure if I could pick a favorite either. That's kind of why I asked because they're all, I go back to it. It's like something that's lacking with Breath of the Wild where like, they're all the same, like look. So I can't even like think back in my memory banks and know which one had what going on. Um, I know that the coolest looking one is the lizard one, in my opinion, especially when it shoots, like the whole face opens up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, and that one, I think, was the one where it like, turned sideways, right, or something? Uh, the one with the circles in the middle? I think that was the... Um... See, I don't even No, know. yeah, that was, you're right. That is the one that turns in the middle, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then... That one was cool. The... Um... Rivali's one, the bird wings, you like turn this way and, and that way, like flap them left and right, kind of, but like not individually each wing, both wings follow like an axis. So like one, the left will go up, the right will go down and vice versa. And then the camel, I know you like switched the humps, kind of like there were separate things you can flip. And then the Elephant one was, I think, the weakest of the mobility because it was just like how you aimed the trunk to shoot the water. Yeah. I think that was the weakest mobility wise, but that was just still a good, like, I'm not, like, I don't dislike that area. Like, it's not, not terrible. I think the Zora area looked 
really nice. Oh, the Zora City and yeah, the the Zora City. getting up to the Zora you City, the fighting through. Right, you could swim up the waterfalls. If Once you, got you get the, the Zora, yeah, yeah. Uh, and f- just getting up there and fighting through all the Lizalfos. Yeah, I liked that. That area. was a really good part. Yeah, and then the jungle kind of raining area. I like south that. It's like also really nice. Yeah, I like that part. And then only late, late, late in my first playthrough did I find there's like pretty sure I want to say it's kind of like the southeast of the map. There's like this little beach town that like you have no reason to go to until yeah. like you just stumble upon it. But it's like apparently if you break the the Hyrule shield, you can get another one there uh-huh. after you find it. Um, so that's that was that was like something I only had read that I didn't even need because I never ended up breaking the Hyrule shield because it just lasted for so long. But I guess apparently it does break. So the Master Sword doesn't break, that. right? But it just needs time to recharge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah, it's weird. I never really used the Master Sword. It was it's it gets double power against anything that has Guardian technology. So normally it's thirty power. This is before the DLC where you can make it even stronger. And then it gets um, charged up to sixty. It gets doubled that. to sixty against Guardians and Ganon. And then uh, I did the no, Master Sword when it was charged up at sixty. No, when it's it's thirty base, like against the regular Bow Coblin, it's just thirty. Oh. And then against Guardians, it's sixty. Oh, see, I don't even know. And I, then I always used the weakest weapon I had. So and then the on the the DLC, they added uh, the sword trials, whatever it was called. Um, you can get it up way high, where I think the base damage after you're said and done is like ninety. Whoa! Okay. Or it's, or it's maybe not that high, but I know that the base damage at least doubles to sixty. I think it goes up once again after that. I don't know if it gets all the way to ninety, but I'm pretty sure it gets really strong. But They also, that's like, that's what you didn't play that you would really like is the DLC. I think you should go back and play the DLC. And then. Well, I recently tried to, remember I borrowed it from you and. But you didn't didn't have the DLC though. Well, I I couldn't even get back into it. Yeah. I couldn't even get back into it. You didn't want to give it a chance, but that's. I gave that game a chance. 7.5 out of 10. It's a good game. I had a blast playing it, but. Man, it's hard to go back. Same thing. I had, you want to know what? It's the little bite-sized chunk type games, I think. Because with Mario Odyssey, I feel the same way. The game was really awesome, but like ultimately you're just exploring. Like I don't want to just explore the same area because like it was fun the first time I played it through. Because like every little nook and cranny and oh, okay. But then going back and exploring it for like all the little bananas or whatever they were, the, uh, the moons. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if I like, I have like a real drive to go back and like replay it again. You know, it's just yeah. like, maybe it's that type of game for me. I mean, I had fun the first time through. I loved them, but ultimately. Yeah. But I feel like they also in this more modern age where it's all about instant gratification. It's good to have games where it's like you could pick it up from just play it for 10, 15 minutes and put it back down and feel some sense of accomplishment. I appreciate games like that too. And a lot of games, sometimes I I need a game like that or else I'll never get through it. Um, But games that I'm like willing to really invest in, like a Bethesda game or a Zelda game that I know it's going to be good. Like I don't mind sitting down and playing it for an hour and like getting through like a really complicated dungeon and then feeling really accomplished. Yeah. But, you know, they're all, it's all, I feel like both of those things are possible from, from the game, but. We've talked enough about Breath of the Wild, I think, and um, we've gotten definitely some good speculation for the next game going, and uh, I'd say that should about wrap it up as, unless there's any other tidbits from other Zelda games we didn't mention that maybe you want to bring up now. If, for our viewers or our listeners, all the Zelda games are good, even the Game Boy games, so don't just look at the main um, series, the 3D games. I guess it goes from 2D to 3D in the main series, but there's tons that like I wouldn't consider like main 3D games that are just awesome. Uh, the Minish Cap is really really good. Um, I played that on an emulator on my iPhone. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, Link's Awakening, very strange, but the dungeons are great and they still hold up. Uh, like very puzzling. Some of them, some of them are linear. Um, so really good brain teasers in some of the, these games especially the 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 game boy games the the, the top down ones i really like um 
I know. And did you, Oracle Seasons, Oracle Ages. I've only played one of those. Did you end up playing really, um, A Link Between Worlds? I never played A Link Between Worlds. I picked that up recently. It's on the docket, but I haven't played it through. Okay. Um, so I know you played through that, right? No, I never played through that. Okay. I never. I know our friend Blue played through that and really okay. enjoyed it. Yeah, that's definitely on the docket. I, I mean, I I played Link to the Past, and like to me, I know it's they say it's not a remake, but it's pretty similar. So I don't have a huge desire to go and play it. Like I have a more of a desire to go back and play Link to the Past than to play Link Between Worlds. But um, eventually, I will get get there. I did just pick it up because GameStop was going out of business. Um, in, the, our in, in our local mall. So I picked up a couple of games uh, on the cheap, including Age of Calamity. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Which I'm struggling. Like, I borrowed from you, and I'm. it's those, uh, what are they called? The um, the the Warriors, the Dynasty Warriors games. They just don't hold my attention. They do not retain my attention whatsoever. Now, that's repetitiveness. I have a feeling I'm going to think the same thing. I, I, I really, I tried, I got through like the first three levels and I have no, like, once I learned that it's not true canon, there's literally, I feel no reason to play it because it's just like a, it's like kind of just there to explain like how it was the, you know, before Breath of the Wild, before the Calamity came. So it's like. But it uses time travel or something, Because it's right? like, so yeah, it's like, the, it. it's, it's not canon because it's an alternate timeline. So it's like. Only partially accurate, not entirely, doesn't actually matter because it's not correct. So there's, I really feel no desire to play it because I don't enjoy those games because they're repetitive. Yeah, I'll definitely have to jump into this. I know, like, I, that's why I was dissuaded from it for a while, thinking that it was just going to be this fighting, fighting, fighting. I saw, like, okay, it looks cool. There's different characters with their own flashy moves, but like, once you see it once, it's like, okay, well, there goes the charm. You saw the flashy move once. Okay, now you're going to do it a hundred times. Like, yeah. you're not, like, using it in a unique way. I don't know yet. Maybe we'll do a review or something later down the line when I read it or when I play it. But, maybe the um, slime review? Yeah, maybe a slime review. And I'll let you guys know what I think as a hardcore Zelda player playing this. Um, or not hardcore, but, you know, a dedicated Zelda fan, I'd yeah. say. Um, then going and playing this and what do I think. Um, oh, the reverse inside the... Uh, the case is very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, so that about wraps it up. Uh, you know, as always, uh, leave a like, leave a dislike. If you disagree completely with both of us, uh, leave a comment as far as what you would like to see in future episodes. There's always a game plan, but we always want to hear uh, your opinions and your ideas. Yeah, and let us know what Zelda game you guys liked, which ones you struggled with as kids, you went back and, you know, beat as an adult, all that good stuff. Leave it down in the comments, and uh, we look forward to seeing some of that. So, yep, that's about it. Uh, We'll be seeing you. Peace be with you, and have yourselves a great day.